Hey everyone, and welcome to the 118th episode of We're All in the Same Boat. I'm your host, Luke Roxwold, and today I'm with somebody everybody knows. His name is Shane. Hola, welcome, Shane. people. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, so obviously everyone here knows Shane. Everyone who's listened to my podcast knows who Shane is. I would um, hope so, at least. <laughs> <laughs> from all the arguments and stuff we've been through, everyone knows this guy. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to switch some stuff up, and we're actually doing an interview. So I'm going to be talking to Shane about uh, a lot of different stuff. We got, you'll have to wait and see to hear what it is. But Shane, welcome back. It's been kind of a little while since you've been on, on the podcast. It, has. it feels good to be back in the boat. I must say. Yeah, I know. It, it's weird because, I don't know, it's just like, because everything feels so down. I Like, the motivation to do this yeah. podcast, the motivation to do anything creative just feels, like, off, mm -hmm. you know? So, I know we're going to get to that a little bit later in the episode. Uh, but for starters, I do want to tell everyone that if you want to support this podcast, make sure you go to our Instagram, which is W-A-I-T-S-B podcast. That's where we post content you know pictures and polls and all that stuff so if you want to interact with us that's the best place to do it um man it's been so long since i've done the intro i almost don't remember how to do it <laughs> it's different too though because i'm not just introducing the the hosts like normal now i'm actually doing like an interview so yeah uh, <laughs> yeah um okay so what uh, start at the beginning i guess like i was thinking about it and i realized that out of all the hosts that I've had on the podcast from day one, every single one of them, you've actually known me longer than anybody else. Yes. Because you, you knew me before uh, before I went to CNU. Uh huh. Yeah, so, I've, like, I've known Luke for quite some time since 2011. 11, I want to yeah, say something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it was like, years. I think it was, uh, it might have been freshman year. It was early. Yeah, it, was it, was my freshman, it was my freshman year. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, we, we met in a script writing class in, yes. uh, at a community college that we went to. Uh, I think you and I were very different from each other, especially when we were a lot younger. I know you were yes. a lot more focused on theater. It's funny because it's like <laughs> we were different. We were very different. But we're but, also the same because <laughs> we were you know always what? fighting then too. <laughs> so can I say something? So sure. I, so, you know, like Luke said, we met in a script writing class. So I'm, when, when I like meet people and I, I love people who are different from me because I feel I can, there's so much for me to, to learn and to ask. And there's just so much about a person that I can get to know if they're different from me. If they're the same as me, I, I will kind of make assumptions on certain things or I kind of will assume I know them more than I actually do. So when I met Luke, Luke was, you know, like this film guy. And he was like in a script writing class with a bunch of actors, like a bunch of theater actors, like who were hardcore into theater. And I was like, well, that's very different. He seems kind of cool. Let me be his friend. So I forced myself upon Luke to be <laughs> my friend <laughs> and made him hang out and do all of our weird theater activities against his will yeah but i mean i remember you guys were talking out. about yeah you guys were talking about stuff like you guys i went to we went to the beach like yes. we went to like a, the beach one day uh i think it was, it was probably virginia beach you know like the actual virginia beach virginia beach or actually like the ocean front? i don't think it i don't know it wasn't actually it was i don't remember where it was but the point is we went to the beach we hung out we got food me and all these people in theater um and <laughs> I remember we came back to your house and then everyone wanted to watch Rent. And I was like, what, what is this movie? <laughs> Not my and, house. No, it wasn't your house. I don't know who's, was, who's it house. Was it was I think it was Rachel's. Yeah, I think it was Rachel's. Uh, maybe. Shout out to Rachel. I'm pretty sure it was. Okay, but we watched Rent, and I just remember not being into it at all. But I was, I don't, I, I was so for young. For the record, for the record, though, the movie version of Rent does not hold a candle to the stage version, so yeah. I can understand. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and I remember, I think I was young and immature, so I don't know that I hid <laughs> that I didn't like it. You know, I was sort of like, man, this isn't really, I don't like this very much. No, definitely very forward. In Outspoken. Your yeah. yeah. 
I'm trying to pull Which back is good. on that because that's one of the reasons why I liked you. No, could you kind of just said whatever it is that you <laughs> thought well, about no, something? Here's the thing: that there's like a certain amount of arrogance that people have of like I know I'm a snob and I need everyone to know that I don't like this so that I can stand out. Yeah, and you know, there's certain points where it's like, look, if everyone's enjoying the movie, I don't, don't need to say guy. my opinion right then. Mm-hmm. I could say my opinion if you ask me. I can sugarcoat it a little bit. I don't have to say like everything I dislike, but there's a certain amount of courtesy that I think should go along with like the opinions I have. But anyway, we watched this movie. It's a total play movie, you know. Um, like you said, doesn't hold up to the actual stage performance, I'm sure, like you said. Um, but yeah, I remember that I was more into film and you were a little bit more into like the play side of things. Yeah, and at then the time. you... I think you told me this that at some point it switched and all of a sudden you were more interested in film. And yes. was that when you moved to New York? It was. So so yeah, after I did a year at TCC, did theater, I did theater all high school, all middle school, all about it, love and it. You, Still went, you went to a a school that was like a specialty. Yes. It was I, a theater school. Kind of. It had a a program specifically based for the arts so i went to the visual and performing arts academy at salem high school and Mm -hmm. i was in the theater strand there's five strands there's vocal music instrumental music theater art and dance and then i was in the theater strand Mm -hmm. so i did that for four years it was great and i always knew i wanted to go to new york and live in new york ever since i would go visit my family when I was much younger, we went up to New York every year for Thanksgiving. I said, this place is great. I want to live here. Like I want to, and that was even before I even wanted to be like an actor. I just kind of wanted to live in New York. And then when I got into theater, I was like, oh, I can do theater and live in New York. Awesome. Best of both worlds. So I actually, went- let me, let me stop you just for one second. Cause I realized, uh, we're starting to get into your story and I didn't oh, even really bit. introduce some things. I did want to say that one of the main region or regions, <laughs> One of the main reasons that I think that you're an interesting person to have on this podcast is that you have a lot of different interests that have spread out over a long time. Because it mm-hmm. was plays at first, it was acting. I know that you dance some. I know you like to sing. Uh, you've done photography. You're just kind of a, a big, as you put it, a multifaceted creator. And yes. uh, there's just a lot of knowledge. And I know oh, you've done directing too. Like you directed plays. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many at this point have you directed? I have, um, let's see, one close. I, I don't know the exact number, but close to close to 10. And some being my own plays that I've written, some being other plays. Oh, yeah, you're a, um, a playwright, an actual playwright. Yes, yeah. and, and, playwright. and they're musicals too. So it's like, and, yes. it's. I've written it's, plays and musicals, writing the songs, the music, choreographing. Um, I do a lot. And I have, I, I, and I know we'll get more into this. I just, I have a lot of interest that all kind of develop around one central passion and one central goal. And it's finding a way to incorporate as much of those things in my life as possible, which has been my goal, which has been really fun to do. Yeah. So. That's uh, something about Shane that just for the listeners and stuff. Um, but yeah, okay. So you were you're looking at New York and you're like, this yeah, is so, it. This is where I want to be. So yeah. So when I, I was looking at colleges in high school, um, a couple of my other friends who were really into theater, they were going to the school in New York. I wanted to go to this school. It was called Marymount. And I wanted to go for theater and I believe they had like a really good musical theater program too, which is also why I was interested. But, and two my other two other friends applied to the school called NYCDA, which is the New York Conservatory for Dramatic Arts. So me in high school is a much different person from me today. And I, 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 as I should be, it's been 10 years, but I think when, well, I, look yes. at the, when I look at the growth, it's... Um, Sorry, it has not been 10 years. I'm not that old. It's been nine years. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but so when I when I when I think about like the growth, I I was too afraid to go to the school that I didn't know anyone. Like I was too afraid to even apply to the right. school because I didn't know I wasn't going to know. Anyone I mean, you went there. to New York. I, I have to give you a shout out for that. That was the, already the fact enough. that you that you 
graduated from school and you're like i'm going somewhere and you just left to the city like mm-hmm. the city of the u.s you the know? city of dreams yeah and and, <laughs> and you know yeah not dreams. so i <laughs> yeah so i applied to the school i got into the school it was a little bit of a challenge convincing my mom to let me go to the school and my advisor was really nice it was way past the deadline for applications and all the paperwork to be finished and he kept calling me he's like are you coming i said i don't know talk to my mom and then eventually we made it work and so i got to go and i so the school there was primarily film acting because those were what my friends wanted to get more into like film and tv and i just wanted to go where my friends went because you know friends and so i luke and i kid you not though this is a a film and television based acting school and we do i mean it was also i want to say a miniature film school like from the production standpoint because we were doing all of the production as well as our scene work and stuff so i was in all of these classes and i say again in a film-based school talking about i don't like films i don't really care for movies that much (laughs) i got so many stares and just looks like what are you talking about? I said, I'd rather just, you know, make the movie or be in the movie, but watching a movie, I just don't really care for. And that was very true. I didn't That's really so interesting because it'd be like, it's like, I like writing music, but I don't like listening to it. It's like, yes. Wait, what? <laughs> That's exactly. How does that work? <laughs> it's exactly what it was. And were you so shooting we had, your mouth off about it too? Like just telling everybody like, yeah, I just don't, I don't like films. Like being opinionated I think it, about it or I think were you it was more kind quiet of, about it? No, I think it's kind of what you had said earlier. It was the have to be different type of thing because everyone's talking about their favorite movies and like these classics and things that I've never seen at that point. And I'm like, well, who cares about movies? Like, you know, this musical <laughs> yeah. on Broadway. You're like crossing your arms. Right like, well, <laughs> well, who cares yeah, about and, movies anyway? <laughs> and it was worse because I was the key student, which just meant I had the highest GPA going into the school and so nice. I was kind of I mean I guess um I mean it was cool at the time but like in hindsight I'm like whatever yeah I know it really makes no difference I, like, really I, had, a, I only... had a good GPA graduating and it's like do you really think that helped me it didn't really make a difference I don't think between like okay let me clarify this <laughs> I think it made a difference because it pushed me to push myself to to do the best mm-hmm. that I could but I also think I might have missed out on some networking opportunities because I was so focused on just studying and doing school. And so I graduated with a very high GPA. I, d- I did well. Um, you know, this isn't to brag. It's to say you might not need to do that. So long as you're working hard and, and doing well and focusing on your career in college, like don't goof off, don't fail your classes. Yeah. Um, I think being a B student is fine. I don't think you need to be an A student, you know, or even a C student to a certain extent, you know, because as so long as you so. actually are understanding the material i don't know i mean maybe maybe this is a bold it statement also depe- it, it depends on what you're trying to do what true. your career path if you're doing is surgery be. you know if you're going yeah in, i would i would ah, want an fine. a student above a c student right. if i'm getting surgery you know so. well okay so for computer science like what i did so much of computer science is just knowing how to research and how to google and how to find the right information and mm-hmm. i don't know i I'm still kind of thinking this stuff out loud some, so maybe I'm not ready to just throw it on a podcast, but here I am doing it. But, uh... It's 2020. GPA (laughs) is important, but also, yeah, I don't know that's as important as I thought it was. Yeah, and it's very important. Do well in school, but don't... And I actually just had this conversation with uh, a few people who are seniors in high school now. I said, like, don't... I mean, take it seriously, and especially when it comes to like college decisions and what your major is going to be, but it's also not the end all be all. And it also does not dictate as much as I feel like they make it seem in school. It's like, mm-hmm. if you don't get these grades, you're not going to blah, blah, blah. So, uh, I don't think that's true. Like I almost <laughs> failed government and I feel like I'm doing pretty well. So, well, tell me this then. So in, you said you were in New York City doing the yes. like a serious yes. film the acting school. acting program school like you see in all the TV shit. It was like a it was honestly it was a dream. That first year, yeah, I was gonna say if was somebody, a dream come true. let's say that our listener is thinking about becoming an actor or going into film or 
going to film school in general, what would you tell them the experience was like? So you pull up into New York, you see the big city, you have a dorm. Did you have a dorm or you had a, of like an apartment? I had a dorm first and then I got an, an apartment. So you got out of there. <laughs> yeah, the dorms were more expensive than the tuition. Ah, oh, that is so, so insane. Like, yeah, I can't do this. And it wasn't, honestly, it was if it was worth the price, I would say yes, but there were so many rules that didn't make sense that us like we couldn't go into the kit well, depending on who the ra was at the time we couldn't go into the kitchen past 12 o'clock i think it what? was oh for so come on. if i'm and we're so college stupid. students right if You're i want to eat i'm an adult <laughs> one i'm an adult i'm paying thousands of dollars to use this facility and if i want to make a steak and some mac and cheese at 3 a.m i should have that's every so right d- i can't believe that's a that. rule I can't believe that's an actual rule. Yeah, and some some RAs were chill, like they didn't care, but some who like, took their yeah. jobs way too seriously. And this is for anyone who is an RA or is thinking about being an RA when you go to college. It's not that serious. It's really not that serious. I mean, take your job, do it, like you know, keep orderly conduct and stuff, but don't be a dick. There's no reason to do all that, <laughs> and <laughs> that's my my standpoint on um, that but yeah so film school like uh you, i, I kind of want to get the experience like yes. i'm there so you, you your first class you got your notebook coming from virginia what's it look like what was so your first is, impression talk to me about it so me going for i was really nervous in my auditions but that i know that's not what we're talking about i was really nervous and I, a lot of people would be nervous but they were very like reassuring and very uh helpful with the process and just give a lot of like positive encouragement i I, i'm gonna speak only for myself i don't know if they did that for other people too i'm assuming that they did but i had the best advisor who did that but going into the actual school once i got in it was very it was very surreal because it's almost like everything changed you know i'm used to more at the time at least more rural kind of country-esque virginia beach before they started becoming a metropolis wannabe <laughs> and so going into like the city where everything's like up and up and up and up and up and everything's like really skinny everyone's walking everywhere and it's like cool really quick and i was 19 when i went so i'm like this is i'm away from like my mom for the first time like i have like a sense of freedom i'm like this is exciting and uh, like you know i told myself before like i'm going to new york you know this is an opportunity to change your life around all that old stuff. Like, let's mm-hmm, not worry about mm-hmm. that. Let's try to focus on like what's in front of us. And I was very excited to meet all my classmates. Like I was, or this, before I was key student, I was like, I was hanging out with everyone and like organizing group conversations and like getting everyone's number just because I really wanted to have a good time. And I took acting very seriously and I was excited about all of the classes I think, though, the biggest thing that people would fear or would have the most nervousness about going into it would be, like, the intimidation factor. Like, thinking that, oh, all of these people are going to be, like, so much better than me. Well, and it's or, New York. It's just, yeah, like, it's like I said, it's, it's just, the biggest city it is. here. And so it's, like, if an actor is good, all the best actors, like, where do they all want to go? Where's the best place? And it's, like, New York. They're all going to New York. So you're yes. competing with the best like of the you, best yeah just be like you thought you were the be best like going in your to, hometown yeah going but. to silicon valley as a programmer and you're just like wait a second oh man i am a small fish in this mm-hmm. ocean and that's how it felt but I, I had a lot i mean i i have a lot of belief in myself as an actor like i'm very aware that i'm a good actor and i am confident enough in that and and humble enough in that to be able to say that and not feel like i'm saying that in any type of like cocky way i'm Mm -hmm. just very aware of the skill set that i possess and i know how to use it so i wasn't too worried about that my my more issues came with living in new york like because that's also half the school is living in new york and getting Mm -hmm. the experience and having those experiences translate into your work and on screen. And I will say though, you can get carried away very easily. Like you said, huge city, lots of people. Most of the time you're, we were all very young for the most part and work away from our families. 
and there's like no real no real rules kind of mm-hmm. like in a city <laughs> no so, rules <laughs> so it was kind of like i didn't get into like a lot of stuff because i was more that's just not my thing and i'm like kind of very focused on what i was trying to do but it's a lot of fun you know you're you're with people who all care about the same thing as you, which is what I really enjoyed because I had done a lot of things where people just don't have the same amount of passion and commitment as you. And it makes a total difference when you're working with people who are like focused and are on the same wavelength as you, when it comes to stuff like that, it just makes it a lot easier than working with people who don't care as much. If you could go back right now, you know, you were 19, you were young, talked about being a completely different person. What would you change if you went back and did it again? If I went back and did like New school York, New York film school, like let's say you just got to New York, you're living in New York again. Uh, what would you change? What would you do differently? You know, I'm trying to kind of like think of advice for someone who's looking to do the same thing that you're doing. You know, what I would, advice would avoid, you give and this goes for high school too, especially in the theater world. I would avoid the drama as much as possible. If it does, if something does not pertain to you, do not get involved like i got my key student privileges revoked because i got involved in business that had nothing to do with me whoa even wait a minute though i yes do i get to know about this uh i'll tell a, a quick synopsis so i'm just curious long- like uh what's key student what's that mean oh so i kind of touched on it a little bit earlier but I, so the key student is just you're kind of I don't want to say you're not in charge of the class, but you're 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 the teacher. The teachers communicate with you on like notes and assignments, and you're you make sure you're relaying messages to your entire class, and you're making sure everything gets cleaned up afterwards. And you're kind of just like the go-to student in your class because we were in, so we were in these things. We were in sections. That's what they called them. So you have all of your classes with the same people. So we're like just one big. Th- theater company except in a film school like going from class to class to class together which i did really like that because you know in normal colleges and stuff your classes are with a whole bunch of different people and so having the same consistent people every day Mm -hmm. was really fun you really you really grow together and get to know each other a lot Uh, but but so so it was just kind of like you're kind of like a teacher's assistant in a way um, yes, I did like tutoring at one point. Kind where of. I, was... I don't want to call it that because it it wasn't like it did. It did come across that way sometimes, but you know, I never used it to my advantage. To be like, oh, I'm the key student, so I'm gonna da 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 da. Right, know, I, right. Which some people I'm sure did. But so you got into drama. So what happened? So you you moved to New York, and then before you knew it, you were just getting involved in other people's drama, drama that didn't apply to you. And then before you knew it, you got in trouble for it kind of so like i said with the section things you you have the classes with all the same people like i said you really get to know each other and these are kind of the only people you really see unless you know you hang out with different people at the dorms and stuff or just in general in the city so we had this class called meisner and we had meisner notebooks and you are allowed to take notes when other people are performing or really at any time but specifically while other people are performing Mm -hmm. and meisner is this class where you're kind of standing on opposite sides of whatever the acting space is and you're kind of just giving your most the way our teacher would describe it describe it as is you're giving your most alive response which means however you would express something to like the fullest of your capacity that is what you are trying to achieve when you say that but you're not saying lines well you 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 get to scripts eventually but it's it starts off as in you're just saying like bah humbug or some type of phrase but it's how you say it and it's how you listen to it and then it interprets the tone and the pitch and the rhythm of how you say all the words so it gets kind of vulnerable especially when you 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 allow yourself to like get to that place which a lot of our classes were based on like getting very vulnerable so we're opening a lot up a lot to each other there's like many tears were shed and so this one kid uh a guy he had this whole notebook and he a lot of people thought he was more on the weirder side of things i did not personally think that i liked him i did think that there was something 
I don't want to say off. At the time, I would have said off, but like if I'm trying to be politically correct now, I don't know what I would say. <laughs> but he he was a little like off, and you could tell that. So this one girl who was his scene partner, and they practiced together. I I, I don't know how it happened. She ended up getting hold of his notebook, and so she saw all these things that he had wrote about her, and she said they were like. Some were like vulgar, some were like mean, some were just like straight up like weird. Ooh. And so, you know, as curious teenagers, everyone in the class is kind of like, oh, like, well, what else does it say? Did it say anything about <laughs> me, I'm right? I'm not a teenager and I'm sitting here going, well, well what did it say? Like, what else did it say, right? <laughs> exactly. You want to know. So uh, curiosity, no, I know. of course. So, But we, it was, it was like sexual or was it like criti- critical? Or just like mean? No, it was. You don't have to go into too many details, but I I don't remember exactly. It was just very, like, uh, for the lack of the exact word, like off-putting things. Like there are definitely things you wouldn't say to people if you were giving back verbal notes to people. Like you would not say these types of things. Like I said, some were sexual, some were just mean, some were it's vulgar it was just a whole bunch of different stuff some were just like okay. dark so but you so ooh, all right so, so you found we, this notebook and then what happened yeah after that? so i don't remember exactly who got the notebook i don't remember he went to the bathroom he left the class or something right so the opportunity struck where this one person got the notebook and we're all sort of kind of like looking through it and and seeing what he said i don't remember exactly anything specific but I guess it it got back to him that we went through it, or maybe somebody confronted him. I don't really know completely, to to be honest. But as the key student, I got called in by the the director of the school asking about, like, you know, what was going on and all this stuff. And I explained, like, my piece. And and so I got, like, written up. Wait, why, why did you get written up? Because as the key student, I should be more responsible than all the other 19-year-olds well, in my class. So, like, because you were, like, looking through the notebook, too, and you didn't say, like, hey, we should stop this and stuff like that? I it, guess like, so. It, to be completely honest, I don't, I don't that, remember most, that much of the conversation. I just said, I don't know why I need to be in here. I was just having war flashbacks, to be completely honest, because I was in another situation with a notebook like that in high school. And I was like, I said I learned my lesson the first time. And yet here we are two years later with another notebook <laughs> incident. Um, so so that really got me to be like, you know what? If it's not my business, I'm going to do my very best to not be involved because in high school, I was very much, I need to know everyone's business and not for any particular reason. I just always wanted to know what was going on. I wanted to be in the loop and I didn't ever want to be felt like I was left out. So I need to know everyone's business. And so I think that carried over with me a little bit Mm -hmm. to college. And so then when they basically not, they didn't say it this way, but that's how I took it that, you know, if something else happens, I like might get kicked out. Okay. Well, let's not get kicked out. You want to be the guy who gets kicked out of, you know, college and has to like (laughs) go crawling (laughs) back home to Virginia. I I got kicked out, kicked out. Like, so so I pulled it together after that, and it was it was fine. It did lead to a big fallout within our first year section, which sucked because I really liked my first year section, but like it is what it is. Mm-hmm. So as so for someone going into it, I would say avoid the drama, work really hard, and and like take advantage of the city and the space that you're in, but like don't take it for granted. You know, you are living in. I would say that every day, like when a, a big group of us would go down to uh i forgot exactly what it was called but it's basically this thing that looks over the hudson river and it's in brooklyn so you're seeing the entirety of manhattan and all the lights and the buildings and like how can you take this for granted and so many people did and i did too eventually and so i said don't take it for granted and work really hard that's what i would say Mm -hmm. and know what you want like know what know what you want to do and what type of actor you would like to be and I think that will help you a lot because you won't, <laughs> this, this is really funny, but our the director, this one girl was sitting in the hallway and the director walked by and she was just like sitting on the ground, minding her own business. And he walks by and looks at her and, and he says, you need to decide if you're going to be a skinny actress or a fat actress, because right what? now you're sitting on the line and it's not going to work out for you. And she looked at him and she said, well, I guess I'm going to be a fat actress because I like food too much. And I was like, 
did he really just say that like yeah, that came whoa. out of his mouth to a student like i understand we're all of the adult age but dang man yeah, like, whoa <laughs> whoa <laughs> so that's a bit much to say so especially someone you, you don't even know up. you know yeah exactly so wow. those are the type of people you might uh run into in mm-hmm. your journeys through that industry so now i i want to actually just because you're talking about directors i know we were talking about new york and we'll, we'll get mm-hmm. back to that but because you've had some directing experience and I've had some directing experience. I did kind of yes. want to talk to you about directing a little bit. Yes, me too. Because, man. <sighs> <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. It's like orchestrating a bunch of people is difficult. When I was young, I know I wasn't clear. I'd get frustrated easily. Mm-hmm. I wasn't explaining things well. But then I was impatient too. Like people wanted to goof off and, and have a good time, you know. And I'm like the film we have to get this done yeah you know, i just this is very and I, serious I, work. I really wanted to get it done you know but it mm-hmm. made i wasn't that much fun to work with i don't think and so you didn't have a balance between a work yeah, and I having know. fun balance but you have to like Would understand you- people and like today mm-hmm. so before we started recording this episode i said to you you know what actually uh take your time uh, or take your time i'm in no rush or anything and i meant that <laughs> i thought about it as soon as i said it, i was like dude someone might think I was being sarcastic when I said that. Like, yeah, okay, take your time. I'm not in any rush or anything. And be like, oof, all right, Luke's pissed off. Like, they might take it wrong, even though I don't mean it wrong. And then they might give me a bad attitude the rest of the day because I just used the wrong words. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, that that tap dancing game is is tough. Like, people's feelings and and interpretation of what you're saying or you you know being clear and all that stuff i know that has to be a big part of theater especially because so many actors have like big egos so they're sensitive about things and stuff like that very emotional very sensitive and i've had to have many 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 different types of conversations with people some that i have just not wanted to have and some that i was very excited to have but yeah i think the biggest communication is like what you're saying communication is very 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 huge when it comes to directing because i i never really noticed how much because when you're in it it's very i think it's very hard when you're in it to kind of look from an outward perspective i've gotten very much i've gotten much better at that being able to take myself out of situations and look at myself and everything that's going on from a a third party perspective which i would suggest that be a skill that everyone invests in for their own lives i think it would be very beneficial um and it really helps with the ego thing when you can kind of look at yourself and like hey maybe i'm the one who needs to take a step back or maybe i need to chill yeah i feel and like maybe as a director them. <laughs> you just have to be like a hype man you just have to I'm be excited yes. about everyone's ideas. <laughs> You're like, yeah, that's so cool. What do you think? Oh, man, yeah, that's really... You just have to mm-hmm. be like really excited, make everyone feel really good. That is um, one thing I started last year. I said, you know what? I, I want people to feel like they're really involved and that they're being supported. So I'm talking, like, what do you think? What do you want to do? Like, what idea do you have for your character? And like, what do you think about this? I said, that's great. I love it. And like, let's just try it. Let's build upon it. I'm the best hype man. I love, I love (laughs) hyping up my actors because I want, I want one. I want the best show. And if my, this is just the, the, uh, what's the word? The selfish side of me. I want a good show. If my name is on it, the show needs to be good. And that's just period. But on the other, the selfless side of me, I I want the, especially since I work with a lot of younger actors, I want them to be able to grow and feel confident and their performance and what they're bringing to the table because you know especially teenagers you know being a teenager there's so much going on in your head and you just the self-esteem issues start coming in and uh, i think it's very important for the director you're you're setting the tone and you're setting the atmosphere and i've noticed that a lot more recently because i've i've come in with a negative attitude not necessarily with the show or anything just from work or from life and and, and that really does that vibe that you bring really does translate to the energy of the room and to everyone in it. So, um, 
getting better at leaving whatever negative things I feel like at the door and just like coming in <laughs> excited and it's, ready to work. When you look at like the it's hard. It's very hard. A director's job is to basically get everyone really excited about doing work for you. Yeah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you, your job <laughs> is like, I have to get you to do this work for me. I have to get you to do this work for me. And I have to get you to do this work for me. You need to do the editing. You need to do the acting. I'm not going to do the acting. You need to do all the acting. I need you to do that work for me for the film, yeah. you know? And so you're just pointing your fingers and telling people. What yeah. To so do. people don't like you. It's, it's really That's tough. It. Cause like, you got to get them to mm-hmm. do what you want them to do, you know, to a All certain about extent. Reputation. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there is something to be said. I, I'm sure that with some directors, you can be like a dictator about it. Just be like, no, everyone's doing what I say. And that's it. I'm going to kick down anyone who tries to challenge me. But I don't know. I don't know that that's. I think for that, because there are people like that. And one, it really depends on how you like to work and how people like to work with you. If you were going to be one of those type of directors who is just my way or the highway or, you know, you better do this or blah, 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 blah. You better be a very talented and very uh, visionized person. Because if you suck as a director and you're (laughs) also mean, you're just a terrible person. Like I will take, I've had many mean directors, but they're fantastic directors. Oh, really? And Interesting. They get the job done. And but what I th- do you mean? So, the so they're day, mean, like they're just like, what was that performance? Come on, that sucked. Do it again. I guess. Well, you know, like maybe mean is not the word, but they're very like it's not all fun in games. It's like you know they will s- snap at you if you're not doing something. You know if you're joking about something. Like I've done this many times. If you're joking about something that the director is trying to take seriously, like you were going to get barked at. Like this is not the time for the jokes. I've had to tell people like, stop. I said, I really don't want to have to treat you like my preschoolers. Like I really <laughs> don't want to have to do that. And I will, if I have to, but like, that's, and I've done that from with teenagers all the way up to like elderly people. I've directed elderly people and it's the same thing. It's the same type of thing from I any t- type of age. So it doesn't really, I never stops. Um, but yeah, but if you're one of those directors, I, I don't think you should do that. My thing, whenever, when I first got into directing, mainly so stage managing is where it kind of really kicked in for me back in high school. They told me all the people who I looked up to as stage managers, when I started getting into it, they said, you have to be really mean or no one's going to listen to you. And I'm not a mean person and I don't ever wish to be a mean person. So I said, Well, you shouldn't have to be mean to get people to listen to you. I feel like if you are a good and nice person and you're respectful to people, then they'll listen to you. So that's always been my goal is to be as as good and nice as a director and respectful as a director as possible. Now, I've yelled many times. And I remember I remember the first time I yelled at this group of people like backstage, I i'd never felt so much power but also like so bad at the same time i said i cannot believe i just yelled at these people but they stopped talking was it justified yes because they were talking very loud and we could hear them on stage and they were backstage and i had asked them before nicely to stop talking and they didn't so then i yelled and they stopped talking so it was that weird moment for me where i was like okay i didn't want to yell but I did. It didn't really feel good, but it feels good that they're listening. <laughs> You're like, but I also won and got what I wanted. So but there is that weird power struggle sometimes. Like, where's my soul gone? Exactly. But where is my soul? At the end of the day, when I direct something, I want people to have a good time. Not necessarily that I want people to like me. I don't really care if you like me or not, but I want you to respect me and I want you to be like, yeah, I would work with him again. Or I really enjoy working with Shane as a director, which thankfully I've, I believe I've only gotten <laughs> nice compliments from people. I don't think anyone's had you like to my face, a terrible time working with me. I mean, maybe the people that I fired from plays before, <laughs> maybe they feel a type of way, but that's you not fired, my problem. Like you specifically were like, Hey, it's not working. Here's a box. <laughs> pack up your things. What do you pack up? Uh, Cause an uh, actor, it's like, kind go of to your sort trailer. Of- yeah. <laughs> go to your trailer pack up you're out and no you're not getting the next check Oof. so no so the first time it's been two times i've fired someone i put that in air quotes because i mean it's not like firing and 
the exact sense of what you think is firing, but the first person, just a very terrible experience to work with this person as a director, from a director standpoint and from an actor standpoint, in my opinion. So I wrote this, I wrote this play and I'm directing it. And so that's already, that's already two things on me. I'm the writer and I'm the director. So I'm thinking in my head, right? Clearly I know what's going on. I know how this show works. I know what's supposed to happen. I know it's going to be funny. I know it's going to work. I wrote the lines. I know how they should go, right? You don't know what you're doing. You are an untrained, unprofessional actor. Please just listen to me. This kid, everything I said, challenged me on everything I said. I said, how would you, I was try like this. He's like, well, I was thinking like da, 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 da. I said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to try it like this. I mean, this kid changed lines, Luke. Changed Oof. full lines. And I I'm, have a story actually that about I you have, I'm going to tell after this. I have many stories about people changing lines or lyrics, especially lyrics. I hate hate when people change my yeah. lyrics. I said, I Was it on accident song. or was it on purpose? No, on Ooh. purpose. This is a different kid. Ooh. But, um, so let me finish the first one. So the first one, just, uh, just the constant back talking and everything. So I told, it was for this camp. So I told the camp director, I said, I don't, as long as I'm a part affiliated with this, uh, this team, I don't want this person to be involved. They're terrible to work with. I mean, I've never in my life at that point had I experienced just the complete disrespect constant, constantly. I'm like, if you were a good actor and you made good choices, I probably wouldn't be as upset, but you're not even that good. And you're, <laughs> you have the audacity. I'm like, I went to school for this and you have, and I had to remind people all the time. I said, I have a degree in like this field. I know what I'm talking about and I know what I'm doing. So please just listen to me. Stop trying to make up ideas that you think are funny that are not funny and just listen to me so i do get that way sometimes but the thing with the lyric there was this one kid it was the uh, first musical we did i wrote this song it's called why me and he kept adding a word into the chorus now most of the time you would probably say it's not that big of a deal because it wasn't really like a hard stress word or anything but you add a syllable it changes the whole rhythm Mm -hmm. And now you're changing the whole mood of the song. You, you change the entire vibe of the song by adding that one little yeah, I syllable. can't believe someone would change the words to a song. That's just, it's one thing to change the words as an actor, like to, to, in, to put something yeah. in. It. But the song, it's like, no, that's a poem. You can't just yes. change, the you can't change the words to it. <laughs> yeah. So, and constantly would tell him, no, these are the lyrics. And he would just continue to sing it his own way. Um, and I got so irritated. I said, and my co-writer director was like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I said, it's not that big of a deal because you didn't write this yeah, I know. song. You're like, this if is mine, though. <laughs> <no." laughs> if someone changed your lyrics intentionally, you would be upset, too. And if you, you start don't, like you don't getting, care as much. You start getting frustrated where you're like pulling the script out and you're like, look at the words on this script. Look at them. See how they're printed Bas out? You see how they're all written basically. down? Basically. Look at them. Read what they are. <laughs> are they what he's saying or are they what I'm saying? It's like, okay, he's adding another word in here, right? Mm -hmm. Why is it not on this piece of paper? Because I didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like freaking out. <laughs> That's me. Sometimes, yeah, I do get into those mo it's, it's mo. It's mainly about um, Well, you know, people don't understand that, <laughs> like, just coming from someone I've written, directed, filmed, and edited and sometimes even acted in some of my films mm -hmm. and people don't get For that sure. it's like guys i'm doing a lot of the work here yes <laughs> don't yes. change it because then i have to figure they're like no what if i do it this way then it'll be better i'm like then i have to fix it and here's yes. what happens and this is me just like ranting for a second they will the, i've had actors that will do things their own way and i'll be pushing going, no that's not gonna work it's not gonna work i'm the editor Mm -hmm. I have to go fix that because it's not working. So then they'll keep pushing and eventually I'll let them do it their way. Like I've let them do it that way before. Mm -hmm. Then I get into the editing room and, in spend, and instead of spending like five minutes on something, I spend hours trying to fix their stupid tape <laughs> and then it finally works kind of, you know, it's like I wanted it to be a 10 and I, and I finagled it and worked like if they did it my way. It would be a 10 did yeah. it their way. And it was a seven after mm. all the work I put into it. They'll watch it and be like, yeah, see, Luke? What not this great? It's perfect. Why did you have such a fit about this? It's like, 
because it took two hours. You get it like this. Because <laughs> I had to fix it. You know? Yeah. Now, I... Tr I I know. I know all about it. Can I... And I, 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 I want to tell just, you a story. It's disrespectful. That... I'm sorry. I just... I'm, I'm very big on... I think this is from my theater background when it comes to script work and script, like, analysis and stuff. It's very disrespectful to the script writer. Like, the, our screenwriter, they spent hours of their life and time and soul and body and energy writing these specific words and all you have to do as the actor is to learn these specific words your right. job and this is coming and i have every right to say this because i'm coming from an actor with years and years of experience and stuff your job is not that difficult you have the just easiest hand the paper. job in the room you You're have like, here's the your easiest job, man. job in the room <laughs> you see you see this talent. paper see this paper and they're like yes all right see the words on the paper yes See the words on the paper that have the character <laughs> that you're playing? Yep. Yes. Read those words. It's like, okay. You're done. That's it. That's all you have to do. <laughs> That's all you have to do. You have to show up and you have to perform. I've had many people, and I've started using this phrase and I love it. Um, when people like try to direct, I hate when other people try to direct when I'm directing. I try to be really, if I'm working with kids, I try to be really nice about it. But if I'm working with like adults, I'm like, all right, let's cut that out. But I, I just, I had to tell people and said, let's all please remember that you are talent. I need you to do your, do your part and that's it. Like, well, what about this person? Nope. Focus on yourself. You're worried about Tom, Dick and Harry over here, but you don't know your lines for this scene. I need mm -hmm. you to do your job. So everyone else's job can become easier. Yeah, you change the line. You screw up every other actor. There was you one guy who did that. Every other actor. I, I someone doesn't play. get their cue. I was in a play and the guy couldn't, he was not ever trying. And then the day of the play, he showed up and basically just made up lines and made and the crowd tough. laugh, screwed mm -hmm. everyone up. And people literally came to me afterwards and were like, he stole the show. And I was like, did literally <sighs> he stole definitely, the show. Yeah, he did. He <laughs> took it away from everyone else and changed and it. Right, I have to, I have to tell show. you a story. Okay. So this is All a right. story. It involves you and it involves the script Ooh. writing class. And it is a oh. funny example. I'm going to see if you remember it. It's a funny example of everybody's ego getting involved, right? <laughs> um, and it's just kind of funny, too. I, so, uh, and like I said, it doesn't involve you. Okay, so I, we had to write a script. And I think the script that I wrote was this guy, like, suspecting that his girlfriend was cheating on him and then he was like looking through stuff and just like stewing about him. Like, I know she's, I know that's what she's doing. I know that's what she's doing. And he's like getting all mad and he keeps looking up stuff. And the more he looks up, the more it confirms it. And he's getting more and more angry and his friends with him. And then eventually he just snaps, writes a big long text message to her, just ranting and angry, like cheating. I can't believe you had done this to me. That's so uh, uh, awful. And he sends the message and right mm -hmm. as he sends the message, something comes out that, makes him realize that she's not cheating on him and he starts like celebrating he's like yeah she's not cheating on me he's not she's not she didn't <gasps> and then he just he just freezes and goes oh <gasps> and he realizes that he sent the message already and then it's like then something he like runs off like oh no and then the play is over right so that mm -hmm. that's the play so the timing was the joke to me that moment of realizing yes everything's good mm -hmm. oh no i messed it up that yeah, was the that's... funny moment so i guess what was happening is because there was a lot of actors in this script writing class a lot of them were trying to do what actors are supposed to do which is take the script read it memorize it and then do the part right yes however act. it's it's <laughs> it's my screenplay though and well, or script writing. So what I, what was happening was I gave it to you to play the part of the main guy. The guy. Yeah. I yep. feel like I vaguely, yeah. So, as you were explaining, I vaguely remember <laughs> acting this so, out. Yeah. Um, me and you and a couple other people were all at a table and we didn't do the script yet, but I told you like, you're going to play the part, but I have a request. Would you not try to memorize the lines and just read it off the paper. I think I remember this. Oh man! And <laughs> people oh, no, at the what table. Did I say? No, oh. I, people did not like. I don't remember if you didn't like it. I can't remember. I think you. I think you were a little bit bothered by it because, in a backhanded way, I was like, 
I don't trust you to memorize these lines fast yeah. enough. Yeah, I think. And this is my play. Like Please don't. I don't. I maybe I said it. I might have said it in a mean you way. You probably too. said it like that. <laughs> no, but I. But I wasn't trying to be mean. I was more like, "Hey, I worked on this script. I wrote yeah. this whole script. You're if you try to memorize your lines and show off." You could ruin my script that I the worked script. on. Yeah. And so, but the tough part though is how do I get you to do it the way that I want you to without it affecting you in like a negative way? Because you're like, oh, Luke doesn't think I can act or that I can't, he doesn't think I can memorize lines. It's only 10 lines. Like, why would he? <laughs> and so then all, every actor there that was at the table, I just remember them all like dogpiling me with like, well, how could you say that? I remember at one point just out of nowhere. One of the people there said, like, was, like, trying to debate me on it. And she just goes, oh, Probably so. Denise. So she just goes, like, so you don't think actors should ever memorize their lines? And I was like. It's <laughs> not what I said. <laughs> I, was, I remember kind of, like, doing a double take and being like, huh? Like, what? How did we get here? <laughs> no. <laughs> So I, I don't know. It was just like a big thing, but that's kind of like the stuff you deal with on a set or as a director where it's like it you can't step on people's toes because people will get sensitive. People don't, especially actors, because actors, they're, what they're doing is their face. Oh, man. Oh, Craig keeps leaving. Craig just hates us. I think it's going to be fine. Um, I should just be able to line it up, but I'm going to just start it again. Mm -hmm. Put another marker down. Um, okay, let me just start this over. So, so with actors, it's really tough because what you're doing is you're looking at their face, like them as a person, their face, the way that they talk, the way that their voice is. And so like so much of it is you. And so mm -hmm. if someone doesn't oh, like your I'm acting gonna, yeah. or someone doesn't like the way you're doing something, it's sort of like a personal, a personal attack. attack. Yeah, yeah. For so. sure, 100%. And that's how it feels. Unless yeah. you can separate the art from the person yeah but how do you do that you know that's where i'm like like take our scenario if like the one i just told you mm -hmm. as a director how do you do that because i you don't want to do well, you don't want to be I like think, shane i know you're perfectly capable of memorizing lines but please don't because that still says that i don't I trust don't you to do it i feel like i don't know what my response necessarily was at that time period myself now i mean I mean, we were like I think, 18 I think, or 19 yeah, years old. I think you just would explain what you're trying to do. You're like, hey, there's um, like a very specific timing or very specific rhythm to this scene. And it would be best if we did, didn't have it memorized and we we're just reading off of the paper. Now, that, that nobody should really take, I mean, in a script writing class, you really shouldn't take that too seriously because at the end of the day, it's a script writing class. It's not a performance class. We're not analyzing people's performances. We are analyzing the script. And what you're saying is true. I feel like as the script writer, if you feel, and also as the director, when it's a two, when it's a twofold thing, I think it's very specific. But as the script writer, I, mean, I feel you have every right. You have every right to say that. You know, you could playwrights know, can do I this know, in a but show. It's really not like, good if, when you start getting. Like it was, it was literally me, but, and I, I set this up. Wait, I wait, think. hold on, wait. Do you, okay. do you know about what, like, that playwrights can stop a show, a performance of their show, if they feel like people are like chaining, like if they're chaining the lines or doing things, that like a playwright can stop a whole performance. Whoa, really? Yeah. So like you, it's yeah. Technically, because, I think technically anyone work. who it's wants to. Work. Let me just be funny, but <laughs> <laughs> technically anybody who wants to can stop the play yes. if they want to stop yes. the play. They just run up on stage. Um, but you mean they are like allowed to? Like it's legal. They can just say, "I yeah, hey, you guys are screwing up the play. They, stop." They ha own the rights to the material. You are just leasing it. I heard yeah that you're actually not allowed to like legally you're not allowed to change the words to place you're not. because that's you, you're it's not in the contract for the play yeah it's illegal that's, <laughs> that's so why they can crazy. be like nope yeah, this production like, is over because imagine if i took someone's play and said this play was written by shane now let's put this like homophobic stuff in there you'd be like wait a minute yeah, i didn't like, write what? that that I you can't you that. can't say that yeah. that's my play and and take it and then and then have perform it for people and then mm -hmm. that's so interesting At least too. not calling it by the same name we better 
change the title. Yeah, but then you're Something plagiarizing because you're stealing my yeah, play. Yeah, well, that's you know, yeah, great. Now I can sue you on two accounts. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like being persuasive in a good way and and being a good director is it's tough for those it's reasons. About knowing, it's about knowing who you're working with too. Like I like my like I I have I'm in charge of a theater group that has the same consistent people through with it for years so i've grown with these people and i i know for the most part like how these people work and how they operate so it's very easy for me to persuade people in, in this like within that those confines but when i go outward to like things that i'm not so directly involved with there does there does come that 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 tension and mm-hmm. where I've, I've had an actor or i'm like okay um well, you need to like learn your lines, right? And he was like, "Why do I need to learn my lines?" I was like, "Well, you're not, you can't go on stage and read them." He's like, "Well, I, I figured I can just go up and kind of say like the gist, basically." Ugh. I'm like, "Well, no, because that affects, like you said, it affects Dude, yeah, everyone like, else." Oh, I had people do that with like stage that. fighting. They're like, "Hey." Instead of planning out a choreographed fight for the video, <laughs> we'll just we'll just actually fight, and that will look like, good. No. I'm like, that's gonna look horrible. It's gonna and look terrible. And they're like, "Why would it look horrible? It's real." I'm like, "You don't know anything." About it. Real fights don't look good. Have you seen people actually yeah, fight go to like World just Star. recklessly? They don't yeah. look good. They just look like people flailing around. I do. I did think about this though just now, and I uh, think the art of rehearsal. If I could go back in time. If I was going to redo that that scenario where I was trying to get you to to read my script, I think the first step would be to step away, like take you and talk to you alone. Because yeah. as soon as other people are involved, it's like you are not only uh, trying to talk to what? Sorry, finish. Go ahead, and finish. Well, like you're not only talking to me because you're also trying to navigate what everyone else in the room thinks of you as well. And so if I could take you uh, aside and say, Shane, let me talk to you about this for just a second. Take you aside. And then I think the second thing that I would do is I would make it about me and my insecurities yeah, instead of for sure. my wants and my expectations. So if I said, mm-hmm. Shane, I'm really nervous about this play. I worked really hard on it. I'm really worried it's not going to go well. And if if I, you know, I, I don't want anything to, the timing to get off. Uh, and so if you would just read it uh, it would make me feel better if if you memorize the lines i'm sure you can do it but i would feel better if you just read it so i don't have to feel nervous if i yeah. said that i think that would that would have a lot more weight than me being like i wrote it so you have to do what i say you know because yeah, then 100 percent. because then i because you're being honest you're being honest and open and you're communicating and at least speaking for myself i would have a lot more respect for someone to do that and a lot more understanding because you're explaining the reasoning behind why you want it presented in this way. But I was going to say in this particular scenario, you're also <laughs> we're discussing something in front of like my posse who of course is going to jump on. <laughs> yeah. So into, what you're saying, Shane can't learn lines. It's like, yeah. the dogs yep. are out. <laughs> I know. And then, and then on top of that too, it's like, um, if, if they are in your ear saying, Shane, he doesn't think you can memorize your lines then that's going to bristle you up even more because you're like, wait, even if Luke doesn't think that, yeah. all of the people here think it's that just he thinks thought. that. And so it's mm-hmm. sort of like more more to navigate, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk to you. So how do I, I just want, I'm curious now, how did, how did it end up? Did I memorize the lines or did I read off the script? I don't or did remember. Did you think the scene went well? Oh, you don't? Oh. I, think, I think I remember it went well. I think you, I think you read... I'm pretty sure I read it. I, I don't, I don't I remember, would, actually. I don't think I would have disrespected you like that. And like, Yeah, I think you did. I, and I think the reason I brought it up is a couple of the actors were trying to memorize the lines. And mm-hmm. then they'd screw up the play. And then the teacher was like, yeah, I don't know. Like, blah, blah, I don't know if it was. It didn't really. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, because they, they messed it up. They, you know? like, they messed it up, right? It's not, it's not me. It's them. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's like what does it matter? I'm in a playwriting class. Is it really going to change anything in my life? If Shane chooses to not read the lines, is that really yeah. going to affect my life at all? It, it's like, it's well, so I might get a worse grade. That. And it's like, am I really going to get a worse grade? And if I did get a worse grade, and is it really going to really affect matter? my overall yeah. grade? And if it did, is that really going to affect my overall GPA? It's like, it's really mm-hmm. not that big of a deal. Not, 
not this one particular scene. No. It's like, is this really but, the the hill I want to die on for no reason? Just just because I want Shane to to read it instead of memorize it. Because you might memorize it and do it just fine. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so, you were just nervous. Yeah, I mean, you know, I just wanted my work to be. Uh, you wanted your work to be presented in the way you thought was best, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? That's somebody with vision. Now, uh, so let's wrap up the director thing. Uh, it sounded like you had something you want to say about it first, um, but I did want to jump into the next part of this podcast. No, uh, I mean, there's nothing else I really wanted to say. If you want to, though, if you want to check out, I am currently... I was, well, I was going to say something. I finished doing another project, so I'm going back to edit, editing and putting together the last couple performances of my most recent play but i have a lot of plays and stuff that i've directed on my youtube channel i know we usually plug at the end but just while people are listening to this part so if you want to check out any of the plays that i've done and some other things that i've directed my youtube channel is just shane mccaddy and you can find it there cool yep okay um so to move on from videos and directing let's talk about pop talk the podcast that you've been running for a little while you've had a lot of success with it uh just i know it's gone through a lot of different transitions of things you've been trying um but it's i been think a journey for sure yeah i want to say like i think you and i are sort of in a similar place where just with the way the world is right now it just not feeling super motivated but uh, talk to me about pod talk to- uh, pod talk talk to me about <laughs> pop talk pop talk yes and, a lot of uh, cheese and talks you sort of how that got started a little bit about it some maybe something interesting for the listeners and yeah and what's going on with it right now so pop talk so it's the pop talk podcast well there's pop talk is like the brand and then the pop talk podcast is a podcast that i started with my friend kaylee and we've gone through slight variations but we mainly talk about like pop music and pop culture and like different like either like award shows we'll do album reviews we'll uh talk about different singles we've done uh quite a few artist interviews with people we've had several different guest hosts come on and it's been a lot of fun really over the three years that we've been doing it which is really insane yeah it is nuts to say i remember the first year went by really slow and then the second year went by a little faster but then like three years i'm like oh my goodness it's like what but so that got started because i had been wanting i love music i love talking about especially uh, back in high school where i really got into it but talking about music and and pop culture and just all of those type of things were very fascinating to me and i had so many opinions about it and i would talk you know out loud to myself or whatever i talked to some of my friends about it but i just i had so much i wanted to say and so much i wanted to share and i wanted to be able to speak to people who would also care about these things and not you know my friends who don't are not passionate about it like i am it's not as fun so i was like oh man uh uh and i i got into podcasts a few years before that when i was in new york and that was really cool and what kind of got me really to start it though was actually luke uh sending out uh, a post or a message or I forgot exactly what it was. Pretty sure it was a post I think, uh, about status. starting. Yeah. About starting uh, what became to be, we're all in the same boat. And I was like, Ooh, well, okay. What a great opportunity for me to do a podcast and kind of get my feet wet and see what that's kind of like. And if I enjoy it or I can get ideas for what I would potentially want to do with at the time, I didn't know it would be called pop talk but for a podcast that I was planning. So I did maybe about a month or two with this podcast. And then I was like, okay, great. I'm going to start my own podcast. So this was kind of really the, the, I guess the nail in the coffin. That's a terrible analogy, but um, for me to go about that. And so where it is now is we are on a little hiatus. Um, just because like Luke mentioned earlier, it, 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 there's so many things happening in the world and I don't want to necessarily go into it and like get dark or anything, but it's just like the energy, like 
has like completely shifted and it really feels like we're living in a much different time than the beginning of the year. I mean, this whole year has kind of been trash, but like pre-March was like very different than, excuse me, post-March. So uh, just, for me, it was just, it just didn't feel, uh, it just didn't feel right to um, pretend, not pretend like, well, I'm definitely having fun, but uh, it just didn't feel right for me to put forth all of this energy into something that I felt like wasn't contributing to whatever was happening Mm -hmm. at like that specific moment in time. And I just really wanted to take some time for myself to like take a step back and really think about and process like everything that was going on. And also too, like with COVID until maybe a few weeks ago, the music industry was basically nothing. There was really nothing to talk about. Everything was canceled. Mm -hmm. Concerts were canceled. A lot of people like didn't drop their albums like yeah because you know, i so remember there's... with this podcast it's like something would happen in the news and it's like this is fun this is funny let's let's talk about this let's laugh let's have a good time but now everything's so dark everything happening yeah, everything, is dark either and dark so you're like, or political and it's yeah, like yeah and it's like this isn't fun this is everyone's yeah, angry and and it's not it's fun just, it's just not doesn't feel quite the same mm-hmm. um but i i am so, curious like with with this podcast you did it for three years and yeah. you changed the format some, you tried different things at different times. And I'm curious if like, what's something that you guys did that did work? Something that was like, that's good. That I like having that in the podcast. That makes a big difference. And then what's something that didn't work? Something that was like, as soon as we stopped doing this or changed this, things got better. I don't know if I can answer that about my podcast. So if you don't have an answer. <laughs> I will say one thing. And I think it. I mean, I think it works, so it's not really answering your first question, but once it stopped, things got a lot easier. So my original goal with the podcast, and it still is my goal in some way, which is why I'm having such a hard time finding out a way to really implement it and it be like the spearheading part of the podcast, is I want people to like hear and discover new music that they might not hear, like not this songs that are on the the top Spotify playlist, not the songs that come on the radio all the time, but pop music that may not be as popular, it's, you know, whatever. And <laughs> it, cuz it's so hard to like what is pop music, you know? It's well pop music is popular music. It's like, well, this song isn't that popular, but I would still categorize it as pop because it has the potential to be popular. Right. But um so so those type of songs are really and getting a chance for those songs to get uh, spotlighted and then moving into local artists or independent artists being able to give them a uh, spotlight too and getting people to hear this music that they wouldn't normally hear so i used to not play music on the podcast but i used to edit songs into the podcast Oof, yep. and sometimes we were doing you know 10 15 songs so imagine when I'm editing it, I'm having to get all of the MP3s for the songs. I'm having to select what part of the song I want to play. I'm having to cut and slice and cut and slice and edit and about an automation and, da, 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 <laughs> and all of this stuff. And it was just like, I think what we were talking about a little bit before, you're just late and it's just editing and it's just, you do all of this work and just for me, not even to maybe not like the episode or I I kept saying, what am I getting out of doing all of this specific work? Like, how can I, is this adding to the podcast? Is this, you know, cause it's, it's all about efficiency with, with content creation where it's like, is this the best thing that I can be doing right now? You know, like if you Mm -hmm. had a finite resource of time, let's say I said, Shane, you have one hour to do a podcast one hour that's it then it's like all right in that one hour i better take the most important thing that takes the least amount of time and do that first and then the next thing and the next thing and go well if if people can't hear me if my mic is broken i better not worry about fixing any of the music because my mic doesn't work the podcast will not happen if i have no mic so who cares about the music so the top priority is to fix the mic and then fix the music afterwards and so it Mm -hmm. sounds like you 
I'm curious to hear what you did because I'm actually not sure. But it sounds like you're like, wow, just to get these little snippets of music in there takes me so much time from every step of the way. It's boring. It's frustrating. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. Does it really even help the podcast that much? And and let me say, at first, oh, I enjoyed it because I'm getting to listen to like the songs. I'm well, getting to like select. I'm but you might not enjoy it part. after the thirtieth time doing exactly. it. Exactly, and that's what happened. It, it it stopped being fun, and it became very <laughs> tedious and monotonous work. And I said, and I just kept thinking. I said, are people even listening to like? They literally might skip it. This song, or like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, do what? I don't even know for sure. But then I said. I like having them in there and I thought it just, it gave the podcast such a vibe that I really enjoyed, but just the amount of work that went into it, just the benefit that came out of it, I don't think was worth all the work that went into it. The return on investment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Was not there. So what I kind of did to replace that, it's not really replacing. I, I mean, I started making Spotify playlists with all the songs that we talked about. But then it's like, I mean, yeah, I can I can put the link in all the description. I can share the link. But it's like, are you going to the playlist? Like, how how can I get people? Like, I want to get people to hear new music. How mm-hmm. am I getting people to hear this music? And how how do how can I know for sure if they are listening? Right. So it, and that's something I still have yet to really figure out. I haven't put much thought into it as of late, but. um To go back to your initial question, one thing that we added that I think was like, oh, this is really good, I think is when we started bringing on guest hosts, like, quite frequently, and just because it just added such an extra dynamic, which is why I love, which is why I love doing this podcast so much, we're all in the same boat, because... There's just the dynamics of like the personalities. It's so interesting when you you have four or however many people actually with different perspectives and different. That's a good point. Actually, outlooks on something. It just keeps everything fresh. It keeps that, the energy I, alive. I told you, I don't think I have an answer. I think I do though. I think you just gave it to me. That Ooh. the one thing I noticed. So I don't know if I've said this on the podcast. I know I've said it to you guys personally that every single person that I chose to be on this podcast because I put out an ad basically on Facebook saying. Hey, I'd like to start a podcast. I'm expecting to talk about these different things. These are sort of what I would like to do from this podcast. Who's interested in doing it with me? And and obviously Shane was one of them. Michael, John, Brent. Um, is it for the first round? And then Nick came on. Yes. John left. Yeah. So like different people at different times. But there's other people that actually showed up to the... Wait, didn't we have... Who am I forgetting? Me, you... Michael, Michael, John, Bre- never mind. I, I like, think we have five people at one I'm point. Like, but you my mind is going a different people. place. And I was like, wait, I wasn't thinking you, about the people. So, yeah. but the the point is, like, <laughs> there's different rounds. Like, there was I basically had a big meeting with a bunch of people. I don't even remember who all was there, but it was probably it was a lot of people, like eight people, eight different people I that I talked more to. Than that it might have been. I I don't remember how many people it was, but um, and I talked to them, and people said who you know people were like, oh, I'm interested. I'm not interested. Blah 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 blah. Uh. And like, I literally had people say, I don't know that I want to be on the podcast because I don't really want to argue. And I was like, all right, well, then get out of here. You know what's so funny <laughs> yeah. about that meeting? But yeah. All, all I want to, oh, were you going to say something about that meeting? Yeah. So that meeting, I think, I'm pretty sure Luke was asking questions or, or people were making comments or whatnot. I said nothing during this entire meeting. I don't even, I think I half paid attention during this meeting. <laughs> I was already, I was already sold from the initial post because I was like, oh yeah, Luke's doing a podcast. I love Luke. I think Luke is like, I, cause this is when Luke was heavily doing vlogs and I was like, I, his work is really good. And if I get an opportunity to work on him with something, that'd be really cool. So I was already sold from like <laughs> just the initial advertisement. I just went to the well, meeting for like, the formalities. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I appreciate that. Um, but what I was saying is that like with with that, uh, when I talked to everyone, I said, you know what? I think this person's going to be good for this. I think this person's going to be good for this. I think this person's going to be good for this. So like, you know, you're obviously like the pop person. You know a lot about the pop music and uh, like, uh, you know, like, how do I explain it? Like the artsy side of things, you know? So if yeah. I was going to say, 
this pop artist did this. You're going to know all about it. If I, you know, anything yeah. music related, you're also the very opinionated, culture, yeah, sure. you know, you obviously push against me a lot, which is good for the podcast. Cause if I'm saying something, I don't want everyone to just, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yep. Yep. I agree. I'll be able to say, no, I don't agree. And it's like, why not? And then we go back and forth and we, we have fun with it. So like, that's one of the reasons that I chose you. Then Michael, I chose for a different reason and Brent and John and Nick and all these different people were all for their own reasons. But what I noticed is that if, if people are missing, the podcast didn't work as well. It was like the best podcast episodes we've had are when we were all in it, in the same boat, obviously. Yeah. It's like trying to put together a puzzle and you're missing a piece. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. It's like, you can still do it, but is it complete? No. Um, but yeah, uh, I know we were talking about pop, pop talk. Uh, we are getting close to being at our, our time limit. Um, but I, I was going to ask you about... Uh, well, we don't need to get into that. I, let, let's talk about this this latest thing you've been doing. This because you, I know you said this music thing is yes. like kind of a new world for you. Um, I don't know anything about it. I don't know. I've listened to the song; sounds really good. I'm excited for you to release it. Um, Thank you. I but you said, that. "quotes my journey with this music and how it's led to me releasing the song because it's a story." So, talk to me about the song a little bit. So. Okay, so I think it's very... Let me start from the beginning of the inception of this song. So, I write a lot of music, and I've been writing music, or writing... I shouldn't say writing music. I've been writing songs in various capacities since I was in middle school. And it started off as just me doing little... Like, I used to do this thing where I would have like a, there would be like a popular song, and I would pretend that I was doing like a remix to the song. So I was like, okay, well, let me like write my verse for the remix. And then I would like record my little part. And at first it was just me recording it on like my phone over the song. And then I was like, then I got to a point where I had the actual song and the instrumental. And then I would take out the part that I needed and put in the instrumental and then record myself over that. So it would be like a little remix, right? So that's what I was doing at first. And then I started writing a whole bunch of songs, but um for various reasons i just never wanted to share them with people i was always so like insecure and afraid of oh like what if people don't like them even though i thought they were really good I, it was just like a lot of different thoughts on you know just because i i liked music so much and it it meant so much to me and it's just very a, a different way of expressing myself mm-hmm. so i was like nah i'm just not i'm not good enough or they're not good enough for me to share with people so so doing that forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And I'm just like, when am I going to get to this point where I can just like put out music that I, that I make, I really like, like, I like almost all the music I've ever made in my life. Like I love these songs. I'm like, it's so unfortunate that no one is, <laughs> these songs are not seeing the light of day. And last year, so I put out a song last year called, something important that was the first song i put like my music like i i put out other songs with like the musicals and all of that stuff which has actually got my feet wet with putting out original material was doing it in a collaborative sense because i'm like well if people hate the songs i can just blame somebody else but like oh they did that part like so that wasn't me (laughs) but this one was like all right well it's all me and So I I wanted to put out that particular song because I said, all right, Shane, you love music so much. If they're in a, in a perfect world, I would love to be able to do music as a career and like, you know, do videos and go on tour and do all of that stuff. I said, but you are never going to even remotely get there. If you can't even put out a song, you can't even put out one song. Right. So I made the song, didn't tell anyone about it that I was making it. And I just like put it out And then it was there. So it was like, okay, you have something. So now from here, we can kind of go anywhere. And I got, I got over that, that anxiety Mm -hmm. that was like killing me. Like, Like I'm so afraid to put out music, but I really want to put out music. Yeah. Because people don't understand that that's a big part of content creation is saying, I'm afraid, I'm nervous. I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. And just keep doing it. Keep coming back to it and do it and do it and come back to it and um so it's yeah. good i think that's really good that you got over that yeah and that it was a big a huge a huge huge moment for me and so i after I, that i had a whole 
couple of different songs like lined up that I was going to do and were going to come out. I was very excited about like doing music. And then I hit a point where I, I had to sit back with myself and I said, okay, Shane, just where I am in life. And at the time I was 23. Six and by no means do I. I'm 27 now. By no means do I think I'm old and any. I don't want anyone to think that's where I'm going with this. But it, it hit me where I was like, okay, um, well, you're not 18 when you, you know, wanted to really like put out music and stuff before, and you were kind of allotted the time to, uh, to grow and have like artist development and put out a like, kind of. Not, I don't want to say random songs, but put out random songs. So I had to really, I, I took this past year, specifically the last six months, to figure out what type of artist I would want to be, like what type of songs do I want to write and what type of like message do like I want to stand for and all of these types of things. Because if I'm going to do music and if I'm going to do it seriously, I want to have direction and I want to be committed to that and I just don't want to be here's this random song about this here's this random song over here and this da, 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 da. and so taking that time to come up with that was a lot of really fun uh things went into that and then from the other perspective I was getting these beats right mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that I think uh, people who do that like that if you do you and that's your way of doing it and I, I love that too I have uh, songs with beats that people produced um that are going to be coming out but i had a tough challenge when i was making the song something important because i didn't like this one part of the beat how it played it played three times it was like the chorus part it played three times i only wanted it to play twice Mm -hmm. you you see my struggle i can't change the beat the beat is already made i didn't make the beat so Mm -hmm. i have no right to change it Mm -hmm. so it is like what it is so that became starting to get frustrating to me. I was like finding the, these beats. I was like, I really like this, but I don't like this particular part. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I could spend the 200 close to $300 to get like, you know, the exclusive rights and get the stems and I can do whatever I want with it. But I'm not spending $300 <laughs> on a beat to make no money right. really off of it, you right. know, in the end. So I was like, Okay, I really like music and I have a lot of I have a lot of songwriting potential and talent. Let me just invest myself into that and let's see what I can do. So I spent like the last six months, um, and quarantine really gave me a lot of time to do this. So that's like the one benefit <laughs> out true. of it. That's true. But just diving heavy into like music theory and piano and sound design and producing, those are like my main four oh, nice. elements. I didn't know that you actually <laughs> You produce this yourself? Yes, that yeah, that's what I'm getting to. Nice. Um, and, and 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 producing, and so that way I can the ideas that are in my head that are very specific, I can translate that to audio form, and so building all of those skills, which at the time was very tedious, very like oh, I don't want to be reading these books or watching these videos or like you know like spending hours in sheet music books like just analyzing all of like the notes and like the rhythms and like doing all of that stuff and like you know the chords and the key signatures and just Mm -hmm. really getting a a huge mental understanding of how it all works so i can kind of just do it without thinking about it um led me to um a few weeks ago maybe three yeah maybe three weeks ago maybe almost going on a month i i I came home one day. I said, you know what? I'm going to do a songwriting challenge. I am going to see if I can write a song in three hours because I have a terrible problem. Oh, that's with such a good commi- idea. Yeah. I have a terrible time with, or a terrible problem with committing to an idea, especially for songs. Like I have so many song ideas and I never finish them because I'm like, well, now I have this idea and it gets hard for me to commit to something. So I said, all right, I got three hours to write a song. So I have no choice but to commit to whatever I come up with. So I started working on the song and I told a few people, so I'm doing like this challenge, like, you know, keep you posted. And so I, um, so I, I, three hours passed by and I had, um, the demo, uh, that I made. And I was like, so I, I recorded it. I sent it 
to the few people I was telling was doing the challenge. Just, hey, what do you guys think think about this? Right. And uh, one person was like, yeah, it's well, that's, that's pretty good for you, for you coming up with it in three hours. I was like, yeah, thanks. I think it has like some potential. Um, but like, we'll see. And so um, this other guy, he said, oh, that was really good. When is it coming out? Mm-hmm. And I looked at that message and I said, ha ha ha. When is it coming out? If I even finish it, like, what are you talking about? Right. I said, this was just like a little songwriting project that I did. And, and then he said, uh, he said, well, I think it's really good. And I think you should put it out because, you know, the more music you have out, the better. And I was like, yeah, that's true. But I don't want to just put out any old song, like going back to what I said before right. about like, what type of music do I really want to do? I said, I, I think this is more of a song. And this is from having just the demo. I said, I think this is more of a song that I would like sell to someone else to, to sing and perform. And so the next day at work though, I played it for my kids and I, I love doing the kid test with songs. I play my kids so a lot honest, of songs. Like, this sucks. They're so honest, but I they're not going to be like, mean. Oh, you know what I mean? Well, and they told me, and you can also tell like, just how they react and how like they move to it. They're it's very easy and clear to tell like what they like and what they don't like. So I played it for them. I said, Hey guys, I did the songwriting challenge and wrote the song in three hours. Do you want to hear what I came up with it? You guys tell me if I should finish it. So I played it for them and they said, yeah, you should finish it. And I was like, great, I'm sold. So, um, so yeah, I spent the next, uh, few days or so finishing out like the production and, uh, and then I had spent a lot of time, doing the vocals because my goal with this so one one i asked someone i said okay i'm doing the challenge what should i write about they said you should write about one of your high school experiences i said okay great got that that's easy i'll write about this relationship yada 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 and i was working on the song and i said you know what i got to a point where i where i finished out the production and i said wait a minute i kind of like this i said let's see like where we can really like take this at now at this point i'm just like having fun right because this is the furthest along i've gotten into like producing something i said wait this is like turning into like a real thing i'm like i really do want to like put this out like once i started really listening to it i was like i want to put this song out. let me right, really yeah. finish it yeah so once i i had like the bear like just like the production and i had the vocals and i was like this song is like pretty good i played it for like a couple of friends and like my mom and stuff and uh, they like really liked it, but and it's it's so I I love thinking about just the in the many instances of like the song where I thought it was done because I'm like I hear the final version I said I cannot believe I ever thought like version one point seven was you know really good, but um so I was like this song needs like a personality like how do I really form it out and uh, turn it into a song that I f- that I feel only I can make like nobody else can really make the song because they just they don't wouldn't have the same ears as me to make this particular song mm-hmm. and that's where I really started to get into all the different like sounds and sound effects that are in the song and like adding those to like the layers just to really give it like the personality of its own and oh that's what I was saying about the um the high school thing my other goal for the song was is that I wanted to write like a very straightforward or not straightforward, but very standard, like pop song. Like, I wanted to use like that format. Like I wanted to mm-hmm. use the verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and I and just like keep the same chords like throughout the whole song and just add different things on top of that to make it interesting. Mm-hmm. I've never written as much as I love pop music. I've never written a straight up pop song and till now like everything else. I have like weird chord changes or it's very there's lots of different types of elements to it, and so. I was re- I'm really happy with how this song turned out because I feel like yeah this is a like a really good like very straightforward like pop song in its structure but I feel like it has a lot of interesting and uniqueness to it that it, it can stand on its own can you, as can you talk us to a little like a little bit about the production of it you know i, I know there's a lot of details of this song i don't mean to cut you off sorry but i'm yeah I'm, no you're good i want to know I'm, what it was like cuz you you've never done this before so what was it like learning what did you, well, actually, what did you even use? So, I'm actually just, again, another small plug. I'm actually going to be doing a f- semi-full track breakdown on my Instagram 
live when oh, a that's an few awesome days idea. after the song comes out. So I'll be able to go into more specific details then. But I think so for the production, how I came up with how I started it was I said, okay, I want to do a pop song. I really, I really love dance music and like EDM. Um, and that is one of the main sort of areas I would like to more delve into when it comes to the production side. So I was like, okay, I want to make like a dance song. So I'm just like, what are like popular dance chords, right? So I'm like looking up these the dance chords or whatever, or dance music chords. And I found this one like they, um, that they use and, uh, you know, the song by Zed, the middle mm. baby, mm-hmm. why don't you just me that song? So I was like, Oh yeah, that song was like very like fun and upbeat and all that good stuff. So I just changed so I took like that chord progression and I just like I changed the key to a key that isn't normally used like in that genre so it just stands on its own right. and then it's like okay I got the chords and then it was about figuring out um, how I would want them to like be played and so I got the chords it got the piano sound that I wanted to use um, so to answer your question I'm using Logic um, oh, nice. it took me a, quite a bit of time to figure out what DAW I wanted to use. At first I was using like Ableton. I was using like the free version of Ableton and I really, really liked it, but there were just, when I started doing a lot more in-depth research, there were just a lot more benefits to Logic that I think would fit me. And one of those main things was like the the comping uh, thing, like the vocal comping where it basically mm-hmm. you can just do a whole bunch of takes and then you can easily oh, slice yeah. up different takes for your vocals. And that's, what I need out of anything, all these other features, that's fantastic. That is going to be very beneficial to me because I really like doing stuff like that and that makes it very easy. But then, and that was just like the tip of the iceberg. The more that I've gotten into Logic, lo- there's so much like to it. Yeah, there's so logic much you can is do. Insane. In the f- and the thing about Logic too, yeah. like I'm using Logic right this second to record this podcast. Same. This is not um, an Apple uh, yeah. sponsored <laughs> podcast. No, but there's <laughs> like, the menus in this thing are insane. There's certain menus yeah. on here that Hold up, I'm trying to see if I can find one. Where they they have sub menus and and where is this thing? I think I'm not in the right view. Oh yeah, here. There's a menu button that says jump between last location, position, and project start if stopped. That is a button. That's how yeah. like sends <laughs> long a button. buttons. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, it, it's very it's so powerful very though. much detailed, yeah. Um, and so just spending the last yeah, so me myself spending the last like couple months just really um getting into it and just figuring out all of these different things um that I can do and uh the best part I think I like that I really liked was picking out like the different sounds so like one sounds like okay we got the piano we got how the chords are going to go let's add in um like this bass part but then let's let's switch it up when we get to like the build up and the chorus let's make it more like bouncy cuz I want people to like groove and I want people to like you know, bounce yeah. to the song when they listen to it. So, um, and the bass part, like I'm, I can't wait to do the IG thing because I feel like I'm gonna just geek out because there's I spent so much time on this song. I have so <laughs> much like to say. Like you guys don't even know like the amount of like small details that are in this thing. Like the bass part, there's like three, there's four basses in it, and I don't even think you can uh, tell there's layering, four basses yep. in it, which is yeah. And like I have this two, um electronic uh well there's there's one electronic bass there's one synthesized bass there's a live bass and then there's um like a sub bass from one of the piano uh parts and i was like i just want to create like this nice very fun super bouncy uh super bass is what i called it and so getting that in there and then of course having just my favorite i love four on the floor music just that that four with yep. the kick just yep. that boom 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 dance love that and um well the thing about like recording the music that, that people don't understand yeah. is like you'll put like a bass or a drum or something in there and then people will listen to it and they don't realize that you had to do a lot of changes to it to make it sound yeah, punchy like it sound, to make it sound like, like for that. me like it's like a drum or or a guitar whenever i'm recording it it just it always sounds flat you have to do mm-hmm. so much work to get it to that punch. processing. Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, and that that was a whole 
that was a whole nother thing. Like just the producing side was a whole thing. And then the mixing side was a whole nother thing you well, know, I, in itself. I do want to go backwards because yeah. this was something that I noticed you said that I thought was, uh, yeah, I, I literally freaked out for a second. I was like, that's such a good idea where you were talking about oh, making yes, a contest. Challenge. Yeah. Challenge for yourself saying, write a song in three hours. That mm-hmm. is so good. Cause remember when I was talking earlier about being efficient finding the most important thing to work on at at a specific time and then focusing on that. yeah that's basically what it 100%. forces you to do that's so good yeah then i and honestly I, i've told some of my friends that i said honestly i'm gonna do more stuff like this even just outside of songwriting because it got me to sit down focus on something and get it not i didn't finish it obviously but get it to a, a place that it's really that I would have gotten any further if I just like was freely doing it, you know. Because for me, it was like I'm seeing the time. It's like, oh, I got to get this done. I'm like, okay, well, let's just use this sound. Okay, let's commit to this. Oh, those chords are nice. That's great. Oh, this part is great. Okay, what's the next part? Okay, we're doing the lyrics at the same time. Oh, okay, well, we just wrote these lyrics. So like, let's change this. And it was my first time writing a song where like the production, the music, and the lyrics and like melodies are all kind of happening at the same time normally i will i'll write a song on piano and then you know we'll go back and translate later mm-hmm. um but this was all happening at the same time which is but also you, very you get it exciting for it's me it's like in in those three hours you have to go i only have three hours so what yeah. is the most efficient way to do Important this thing. you're like i, I yeah, gotta do this i can't i can't spend six years writing the lyrics i have one exactly because if once i finish so, writing the lyrics i have to go record and then i have to process mm-hmm. like there's a lot of work. I mean, I, I know you didn't do it that way specifically because um, you yeah, didn't actually that was, have. That was the goal. So but, let me tell you how. So with the the demo in the end of the three hours, what I ended up with was I had the the first verse, the bridge. and uh, Sorry, not the bridge. I had the first verse through the end of the second uh, drop course section. But I didn't have the drop yet. I It was just like a second me singing a second chorus with like slightly different lyrics and all the lyrics though i were the verse pre-chorus and choruses i had all those lyrics in the three the demo time the bridge came afterwards um when i decided to complete the song so i had all of the first two segments of the song basically at the end of the three hours which is more than i would have ever really had and of course i made a lot of variations uh to the production from there but the the lyrics have mainly stayed the same since the beginning and the melody kind of changed a little bit here and there but that was a big thing for me too just with the challenge even when i decided to complete it i said i want to stay true to what i did in that three hour challenge you know i recorded the the vocals that you hear like i think the next day and there there are places what i like about the song too and when I'm, i said about putting it out just from a nerves point of uh from a nerves point of view is that is that this is like not this is not i don't i don't i'm not like trying to put down the song but this is not my best material so like there is so much more to come that i think is better than this so the fact that i'm comfortable with putting this out even though i think this is really good and i'm not just saying that because I produced it like I, I really wanted to make a song that I would listen to and I've listened if anyone has recorded any variation of music or really anything if you edited a video you know how many times you listen or you see that video you hear that piece of music yeah. I've listened to the song yep. a million times <laughs> in many different ways and I still love it I'm still not tired of it I still That's good. I get really excited when it comes on and that was what like I wanted it that I have to listen and I do that with all of my music. I know a lot of people have a very tough time listening to themselves, especially if they're singing. I listen to all of my songs like at least a thousand times <laughs> and I have to because I want to make sure it's good. I want to make sure I like it and I should be able to listen all my favorite songs. I can listen to a million times and I do not get tired of well, it. If and I can't do like, it with my own song, that's kind of how you learn because if you listen to yourself over and over and over again, your brain will you know figure what? things out that you didn't even intend to figure out about how to use your voice and how to talk and that's one of the reasons like 100 percent. I've, I've done podcast episodes with people and then they never went back and listened to the episode 
I'm like, what? What do you mean? Why would you not listen to it? And it's like, oh, I just don't want to hear myself. You know, and it's like, like no, sound. you have to, because then you have you have to know how you sound. Like, there's plenty of yeah. podcast episodes that I've released that I went back and listened to and was oh, like, cringe, right? Oh man, this is not. You fun. just want to delete it. Yeah, but I've I had many episodes like that. I'm like, oh, you know, I, I just. <laughs> I hope no one listens to that one. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm going to publicize that one a little less on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I think that's um, awesome. Yeah, and so... Um, so, it, it's just been a really... And it's been exciting for me because now I've been able to go on this whole... Like I said, I really want to do this, like, this right. I want to have a whole promo thing. So, um, you know, of course, I got this... I outsourced... Um, to, so one of the things that I wanted to do it with this particular song too, is that I wanted to, and let me know if this sounds weird because I've explained it to a couple of people and I don't know how it makes me sound when I say it, but I wanted this particular release to be less about me and more about like the song that's coming out. Like I didn't want it to be like, Oh, like, you know, stream my song or buy my song because it's my song and you should hear it, which, you know, was, which is why I ended up, I wanted to make the song the least about me as possible because I'm like, it's already my song. I'm already singing it. I already wrote it. I already produced it. That's already a lot of me. So I got, I outsourced to get, I found a digital artist who I actually met through an online theater group, funny enough. And she did the artwork for me because I said, well, Shane, you know, you could take a nice, a really another nice, really picture of you. You can <laughs> edit it really well and make it all immaculate and it'd be great. But then that's just you. It's just you editing a picture. It's you, a picture of you. It's you, 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 you. I just, I don't know for this song. I just really didn't want that. And even with the promotional videos that I've been releasing, which you guys can check out on my Instagram pages, cause this will come out later. But that, like I got, thank my the best friends and i got my friends to like act in these little promotional videos for me i'm like great i don't have to act in any of these mm -hmm. i'm like it's it's not me telling people to listen to my song it's other people yeah <laughs> telling the, people to the to artwork my song. just to but, say it looks awesome um thank and that's you the thing is, I, that's why it's important to be humble and say you know i okay making this all about me why don't i get someone else to do it because other people are really good at things and if you can get other people really to help good. you oof, it looks great though and other people are better at things yeah. than you yeah, and you sometimes you have everything. to admit that yeah yeah you you can't and uh, for me i this is a, a really great i mean it's still happening but it's, a, it's been a really great experience for me because i'm terrible at asking for help i am i'm sure we've talked about this many times i'm the king of i'll do it myself i'll do everything myself because i'll know it'll get done and it'll look at least you know semi good um, so I'm going to do it all myself, but like this, even with the last play I did, I'm like, no, I want to become a better collaborator and I want to empower other people like the, the artist I worked with, which I'll give her a shout out. Um, her name is Taylor Cooper, but her, her art studio or page is called art by theory. So make sure you go follow her. She's a digital artist and she's really incredible. And so we were going back and forth talking about des design. I said, so I kind of want something where it's like the words are being like painted on like this wall because it's supposed to be like a high school and all of these things. And so she came up with a couple of different ideas. We were like going back and forth. And um, she said, well, what do you think about this? And she kept asking me, what do mm -hmm. I want? What mm -hmm. do I want? And which is fine. But I said, um, well, these things I'm, I want to leave up to artist interpretation because I don't want you to try to make what's in my head because you you are never going to achieve that and that's nothing against you that's just my vision is so specific that it's not going to be achieved most likely so I want you to make I want you to take what I'm giving you and I want you to make your version of that and then I'll be content because I'll see my ideas but I'll see your ideas as well and that makes me feel good because if you're trying to make something that i want to happen I, you're just i'm going to be disappointed every time and i've told people that um like I, I i have another song coming out soon that i collaborate with on so my one of my friends is uh well we co-produced it but he did most of the production and i sent him some references i said this is kind of what the idea is 
And he was like, I don't think I can make this. I said, I don't want you to make this. I want you to listen to these songs. I want you to get inspired. And then I want you to make, I want you to do you with that inspiration. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And I, I, and so that, that's, it's been a great collaborative um, experience, even with the promo videos. I'm like, I want you guys to come up with the script with me because I don't want to just write a bunch of lines for you to say. I want it to feel like it's coming from you and it's coming across very natural. And I'm very happy with how all of those videos turned out uh, because of that reason. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm really excited for you to release it. I think getting content like this is really important to, to, to do something you haven't done before. Uh, and you've done yeah. the plays, you've done photography, you've done video all these different things music singing um but now it's like all right produce and uh there's a lot to learn you know like yeah. logic is a huge program but huge like huge program youtube I'm like tutorials forever you know there's tons yeah. of teachers out there um yeah and there's so much to learn and it, it, it's just exciting just like getting I, getting what's exciting for me is just getting better at something i used to have this really huge fear and i feel like i still do in some aspects of my life i am like i was used to be very terrified at being really good at things that i would like self-sabotage myself so i either would not be good or i would stop doing something that i was getting good at like for example playing guitar i'm kind of getting good at guitar oh no i'm getting too good at guitar what if people like want me to play or what if like oh, wow, oh yeah. i can like do all of these things now I'm like, i don't want to do that that's like too much i'm not gonna play guitar anymor even though i like playing guitar right. i'm getting good at guitar but then i'll stop playing because oh i'm getting too good right and if that happened with then a I lot of things well, in my the life the better you get at something the more responsibilities you have so it's like oh no. yeah that as well I'm like, no, Shane, don't do that. Like, get good at something so you can, like, really, like, do these things. And you, I want to get better. And I think that it's allowing myself um, to do that. Mm -hmm. And this is just really, again, with the, the song, it's very full circle for me from going from, like, <laughs> definitely afraid to, like, show anyone even like, these little raps that I, like, made up to now fully fully producing and writing like my own song like officially like putting out it's going to be everywhere with like all like, the the promo and all the and the stuff and the and the fun aspects about that that i'm like wow that's really cool and it it almost like a dream come true and in, in a sense because i just never thought i would get to this point in in music to do that but it's really exciting to be here and um i did want to ask you though about the song just uh, i've been asking everyone a few questions oh you're gonna um, ask me live about it yes i am gonna ask you live <laughs> so i i uh i guess a few questions is one um oh well, how many times did you listen to it just listen to it like once yeah i just listened to it once before this okay well then you, you might not have the best answer for the first question but like how did like what like how did the song when you listen to it like how did it make you feel or how did you react to it like what was the vibe like for you uh, like you said, it was sort of like upbeat and kind of happy, hopeful kind of song. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how to, to right give words, you... Right hopeful. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how to give you a, a great answer on that, but yeah, no. It, no, that's good. No, that, that's fine. If that's, I told you, like, good. oh, I felt sad, you'd be like, oh, man, all right, well. No, well, <laughs> well, no, no, <laughs> dude, happy and hopeful board. is good. <laughs> no, no, hopeful and happy is good. I have, like, very clear intentions with how I want people to feel with the song so just when i hear people's reactions that are in a similar vein to that i'm like okay great i guess that part is i can check that part off um the other question is and this might be a little more difficult if you've only heard it once is what was your favorite or what segment of the song stuck out to you and by segment i mean so it's like the beginning of the song to like the end of like the first drop and then like the second verse to the second drop and then the bridge to the end of the song um well you like you said i, I only listened to it one time but yeah i know it's hard i i remember when i first started i i liked the drums like i liked the way the drums shifted where they got a little bit more full you know it was like kind of like a light drum yeah and then it shifted in mm -hmm. um and i'm trying to remember if that's when the music if the music came in i mean you probably know because you wrote the song if that's where the music first comes in and the drums shift um, I like that. Um, 
I just wasn't prepared for the question though. So I, yeah, I, I thought I know, it sounded okay. good. Like overall, <laughs> especially like the, yeah. the instruments. I think there's a, there's so much that goes into recording something that mm-hmm. there's so much to learn to like make things sound fuller. So oh. like, Oh yeah, there's on it. Yeah. There's a lot. And it, it's just really cool. Like, and I, I guess I nerd out about this stuff. Like I played the song for one of my friends and I was like, <laughs> basically breaking down the song for her. Like, do you hear like this part? I'm like, do you hear <laughs> how the whisper starts in the left ear and then it moves over to oh, the right nice. ear, but it's not an actual echo. It's actually the same vocal, just on two separate tracks, just like a slightly separated from each other. But the second one is um really, um, full of reverb so it sounds like it's wisping away yeah, from one yeah, ear to the other did you hear that she's like no i said oh, the small details <laughs> people the small details. i know it's hard it's hard when you when um, you listen to it like i could show someone i remember showing like yeah punch sound effects and being like listen to this one listen to this one and they can't even tell the and difference I'm like, whoa that second one sounds so much better and they're like right. and they're like what yeah <laughs> definitely i can hear the difference for sure yeah i know it's just it feels so good and I, I i i think that's also when you you just know how like much work went into something so you just you appreciate it so much differently that's why i really like this song because i, I just know how much work went into like getting things to sound a very specific way um that'll give off a very sp- specific feel so i i just i get excited every time i listen to it i wish i could listen to the song though for fun and not listen to like the mix do you know yeah, what i mean because you you're have like, like wait i remember hearing that oh maybe i should have done that to this or... yeah i was like oh that part's a little loud oh that part's a little quiet i'm like just enjoy the song <laughs> <laughs> that's why i have to tell myself i had to get to a point where i was like okay i'm just gonna be done with it and put it out there's a million and one things i could add to this song and i can do to this song that i want to do to this song but i said i can go on and on for days and ever but i want I wanted to make sure the song came out in a timely fashion just, where I you would got to be good at like releasing stuff. That's that's yes, why I always say exactly. you got to be good at just pushing the upload button and, and releasing yeah. content and not holding on to things for so yeah, long where that you feel like it, it can't come out. I would out. say 80% of people that I know that want to do stuff like content creation and they don't, it's cause they sit on it. They sit on it for yeah. just a little too long they and then sit. it never gets released. I do the same thing. Mm-hmm. I've done it with a lot of videos, but I've also not done it with a lot of videos and content um yeah it's part of the reason we record this podcast and immediately as soon as we're done recording i start editing as soon as i'm editing done editing i upload it that night as soon as we're done recording and that's smart because it gives you you don't have time to think about it you don't have time to be like because i've had like podcast episodes where i won't edit it until like the next day and I'll, I'll be thinking about it i'm just like oh like i don't even really like that episode like is it even worth right. editing nobody needs to hear that Whatever. oh we had all those audio <laughs> issues i have to fix and yeah oh, exactly man. yeah it's, instead it's, of just doing it you, you hesitate it right there. you die mm-hmm. you 100 um what's the thing um think what is it think hard but don't think long yeah something like some, that yeah i don't know um so to wrap this up like this whole section about your uh your song uh, where can people listen just to it? it? Rest of our lives, by the way. I have not said the title. Oh, rest of our so, lives. Yep. Yes, rest of our lives will be available everywhere that you listen to me. Okay, maybe not everywhere because I know some people listen to music in very specific. One person's places. like, I listen on um, LimeWire. So yeah, come on. right. We're so smart, it, so. it'll be. I'll say ninety percent. It'll be ninety percent where you can listen. Uh, to music it should be out already when this episode is out so uh if you want to go to any of my pages i will have the links for you to listen to it or you can search it up uh just so it's not confusing it 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 will so my artist name or my music name or however you want to say it is demarcus it's not shane and there's like a whole reason for that but so if you go to my demarcus page you'll i mean it'll be on my main page too but my music page you'll you'll things will come faster on that page and then i'll post it to like my main and page what's your like a little later. what's the handle for the the music page so the music page is demarcus which is d-e-m-a-r-c-u-s underscore music which you know music and that's it and that's on instagram that's on facebook that so you can follow on both things um more so Instagram because the Facebook page I 
I feel like I need to delete it and make it again because it hasn't been letting me do like any edits to it, which is a little strange. But um, so yeah, so you can check that out. And I hope that the song um, just you know makes you feel good, makes you bounce, and just you know will bring you some type of joy for the three <laughs> minutes that you listen to it yeah. during these troubling times. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a true the, the troubles. Uh, oh, and actually, too, just oh well, we're gonna get the plugs. Never mind. Yeah, I was gonna say because we're we weren't <laughs> going pretty long here, but I, I wanted to give you time to talk about the the song and stuff like that. So uh, um, yes, I'm very excited though. So if you if you do end up listening to the song, even if like you have, well, if you have flat out terrible things to say, don't tell me. <laughs> but I would love to know what anyone thinks or just any opinions. Like I said, it's the first time um, I've produced a song and actually released it. So. I would love to just know what you guys think. So yeah, definitely. So um, yeah, and guys, try and try and listen to the song. When when does it come out? Did you say the date? I actually missed if you said. Oh, it comes out September tenth, and uh, I'm praying that it actually comes out September. T- I'm fairly hey, sure it will. It's supposed to. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow. For, September tenth. When we're recording this Thursday. Oh, so it'll come out. It's out now. Yes, it'll. Yes, it'll. It's already out. Hopefully. <laughs> it's a- um. They, I did. They were saying a thing where there might be some delay in the distribution, but they'll send me an email. That's the thing. I have not received an email, and I don't think it should be a problem. The last time I did it, it kind of said the same thing, but it was fine and came out on time. So if it's not out, it'll be out soon. <laughs> but it should be out right now. So check it out. Uh, go to the links or search it up yourself. Rest of our lives, Demarcus on Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora shazam youtube oh man it's everywhere amazon music itunes yeah every like everywhere it's awesome listen to it nice all right let's wrap this episode up uh so i guess that's some of your plugs like why don't you plug your other regular stuff too so oh but check out the song guys and, and you just heard it it's everywhere no excuse not to listen to it everywhere. literally no produce this is your first song that you produce right kind of like it's the first song it's the first full song that i've produced like completely by myself and put out yes yeah so like that's reason enough to go listen to it just to support him uh i think it's awesome that you did this so yes go listen guys. thank you um but yeah so now yes, regular my plugs. normal plugs um my regular instagram and all that stuff is mr mccatty um m-r-m-c-c-a-t-t-y and that's just kind of my main hub now for the different little side projects i'm doing but more so it's good i'm turning it now that i have separate pages kind of for everything that i do this is it's going to be turned more into like a my personality uh personal type of instagram and less here's everything i'm doing because it's kind of i'm still going to do that but it's not going to be as obnoxious as it was before especially because no one's doing anything right now so it's like yeah as best as no one's doing anything. anything not really and uh, um, and then too, I recently started a photography page for my photography endeavors, and that's just Mr. McCaddy, same thing, underscore photos. Um, so follow that page. I'll be posting all of, uh, I've been a little slow just because I've been doing the music thing right now, but once the song is out and good, I'll be uploading a bunch of photos. I actually just recently did my first wedding so Whoa. I will be posting photos from that. Yes, I did photography for a wedding during a pandemic. Oof. And uh, so I will be posting the photos from that, which I love some, really, really love some of those photos. So if you want to check those out, again, my photography page, Mr. McCaddy underscore photos. And if, too, if you want a photo shoot or you want to collab in that way, just uh, DM me or message me and we can set something up. If you are in the Hampton Roads area, if you are other places, we can still talk, but there might be some travel fees. But <laughs> yeah. And then um, again, if you want to check out some old episodes of my podcast and you want to subscribe and follow to get ready for when we make our inevitable comeback, Pop Talk Podcast is on SoundCloud, uh, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. So you can check that out at Pop Talk Podcast. And I believe that's everything. I would honestly just follow, obviously follow everything, but just, I have a lot of <laughs> a lot of content, a lot of music, a lot of everything is coming out 
within the next six months. Um, so if you don't want to miss a beat with what I'm doing, just make sure you follow my pages because it's about to get real exciting. And that's all I got. Bam. All right. So you can follow me on Instagram at L U K E R O C K S W O L D. That's on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I don't really use Twitter that much. So yeah, mainly Instagram. Uh, and then you can follow this podcast on Instagram at W A I T S B podcast. So that's, we're all in the same boat acronym podcast. Uh, yeah, Shane, I appreciate you coming on. I know this is like a different kind of hosting thing than normal. Uh, but yeah, it's good to have you. And that's wrap up this episode. All right. All right. And outro. Outro. <laughs>